Hey guys, welcome back for another one. We got a good one prepared for you today. What we're gonna do is we are gonna break down and predict our Duke Blue Devils versus Miami Hurricanes game we have coming up this Saturday during week 10 of the 2024 college football schedule. The game is gonna be November 2nd. It's a big matchup. It's Manny Diaz, the old Miami head coach, versus Mario Cristobal. We are gonna completely break down both teams, the rosters, and predict who we think is gonna win who we think is going to lose, and what we predict the final score will be. And we'll also go over the money lines, the spreads, and the over-unders. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. If you have any comments about this game or anything else, drop them below, and I will respond. We will have all of our top 25 predictions coming out later today as well. If you are a sports fan, if you are a football fan, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you're subscribed so that you can follow along with us this season. Like I was saying, we're just going to completely break down this game. There's a lot going on in this game, and there's also massive ACC implications going on right now. Miami's coming into this game as the number five team in the country, one of only eight undefeated teams left. This game's going to be ABC, 12 p.m. Miami is 8-0. They'll be hosting 6-2 Blue Devils, coming off of that really close loss versus SMU. Do not sleep on Duke. This is a really competitive team with an elite defense, a top 20 defense coming into this game. We know that's Manny Diaz's specialty. We know they're going to play aggressive, fast. They're going to be a physical, aggressive defense. They're going to blitz nonstop. They're going to come after Cam Ward. If Miami's offensive line plays the way they did versus Florida State, Cam Ward might be under a lot of pressure this game. Pressure could turn on into turnovers. However, Miami showed if the passing game isn't working, if Cameron Ward is under a lot of pressure, they can completely adapt their play style and they can just run downhill right at you and they can beat you at the line of scrimmage. That's what they did versus Florida State. Florida State set on the secondary. They said, you're not going to throw on us. We're not going to let you get 400 yards this game. So Miami said, that's fine. We'll just run for 250. We'll run right at you and you can't stop us. So this is going to be a fun game to watch. Miami has a 90.8% chance to win this game. They come into this game, massive favorites here for a rivalry game between two coaches here. They are 20 point favorites. The over under is 54 and a half. We know that Manny was the last Miami head coach. He was fired. And this is a rival game. He wants to beat his old team. Mario wants to beat the old Miami head coach. There's a lot riding on this game. Manny wants to show Miami that it was a mistake that they fired him. Mario wants to show that it was a mistake that they never hired him in the first place and that he's always been the guy for the job. You can't lose to the predecessor and the same thing for Manny Diaz as well. Both guys want to win this team. Both teams are really competitive. Duke much improved under Manny Diaz. Miami right now much improved under Mario Cristobal. Right now, Duke comes into this game. They're averaging 26 points a game. They throw for 233.5. There will be opportunities for Duke to throw on Miami. If you had to pick a weakness for the Miami Hurricanes, it's going to be found in their secondary, especially the tacking and the angles the cornerbacks take to tackle. We are in week 10 of 2024 football season. It's still an issue. It's going to be an issue that plagues them throughout the season. Yes, they played good versus Florida State, but Florida State can't throw, and no one on Florida State can catch. So that wasn't the team to show an improvement there. Perhaps it's going to be Duke, but Manny's going to try to beat them through the air. It's really hard to run on Miami. You have to go vertical. Their defensive line is too good, they're too stacked, and they are too deep. Right now, Duke is running for 110.6. They're averaging 18 Point six per game given up on defense. That is top 20 in the nation. I'm pretty sure that's top in the ACC right now. You don't want to sleep on that Duke defense. They are aggressive. They're going to generate turnovers. They're going to try to force and lull Cameron Ward into some mistakes, but that's obviously something that's a lot easier said than done. They're giving up 183.1 pass yards a game, 160.4 rushing yards per game. Miami is still the number one offense in the nation just ahead of Indiana. They're averaging 46.8 points a game. Still the number one passing offense in the nation. They average 380.4 passing yards per game. They run for 194.4. They're averaging just under 600 offensive yards every single game. And they can beat you throwing the ball. And they can beat you running the ball. And right now they're giving up 21.5 points per game. That's still top 30 in the nation. Even though some people want to bash Miami's defense. Even with some of those higher scoring 40-point shoot-em-out games, they're still only giving up 
21.5 points a game. They gave up 223.4 yards to the air, 97.3 on the ground. You can't beat Miami running downhill at them. Duke doesn't have the backs to be able to do that. They don't have the offensive line to be able to do that. If you want to beat them, like I said, it's going to have to be vertically through the air. Right now, Duke, they have Malik Murphy as the starting quarterback, who's having a great season so far. He's the one who transferred over from Texas this offseason. He's closing in on 1,800 yards, 17 touchdowns, five picks. That's a really good season so far. He is going to test Miami's secondary, and he can scramble. So that puts a lot of stress on the secondary because he's going to extend plays. They're going to roll the pocket. The Miami defensive front will get pressure on him, but when you scramble and those wide receivers start now running back to the ball, that puts a lot of strain on those cornerbacks who are already questionable to be able to keep up with those guys. Right now, Miami, led by Cameron Ward, still the nation's number one passer, closing in on 2,800 yards, 24 touchdowns, and five picks. You also don't want to sleep on his ability to extend plays with his legs. He's definitely not a run-first quarterback. He always keeps his eye down the field. But when he needs to, he lightly jogs for first downs. Makes it look so effortless, but that could be a game-changing thing here is him using his legs as well. Right now, Duke is led by their running back. Also, Star Thomas closing in on 700 yards on the ground. And they have Jordan Moore at wide receiver closing in on 500 yards. Miami, obviously Ward closing in on 2,800 total yards. And they have one of the elite offensive rosters loaded at running back. Damon Martinez, the transfer from Oregon State, closing in on 600 yards on the ground. He's a beast, ran all over Florida State this past weekend. But at running back, they have Martinez, and they have Fletcher, and they have Lyle, they have Allen. They are so deep. It's a different running back who stars in every single quarter because they rotate their guys. There's always someone fresh in the first, second, third, and especially the fourth quarter once their offensive line has started to wear you down. They make it hard for the defense to compete with Miami for four quarters. They've shown you might be able to match up with them man for man for one, two, maybe even three quarters, but no one has been successfully able to match up with their physical offensive line for four quarters so far. Maybe Duke will. We know they have a great defense, but they don't have the depth right now to match up with Miami for those four quarters. So that's one thing you always want to look at. Mario loves that. He wants the physical offensive line. He wants to run downhill. He wants to grind you out, wear you down. Watch Miami's run game in the fourth quarter. That's where they get to stress their muscles, and that's when they get to lean on you and start getting those big yardage. And out wide receiver, they're loaded. They have Restrepo, Horton, George, so many weapons. And then at tight end, Arroyo, Williams, multiple ways they can beat you. Quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. So who's going to win this game? That is a pretty big spread there. I think Miami's more than capable of covering a 20-point spread. But it's Duke defense that could keep them in this game. They might even get a turnover. It gives them some short field there. I think Miami's going to win it, though. I have Miami winning this game 38-17. to 17. So that would be just covering the spread, and we're going to be going with the over just barely. I think Miami, they're going to dominate the second half. I would not be surprised if the first half is very close, very physical, but Miami should be able to lean on Duke by that second half, do what a lot of teams can't do. They're going to push on you. They're going to run on you. Even if you shut the run game down, they're going to keep running. They're going to keep running over and over. First down, run right at you. And then by that fourth quarter, you're wore out. And that's also when they hit some play action and they catch Restrepo for those bombs. So that's our prediction. That's our breakdown for the Duke Blue Devils versus Miami Hurricanes game we have coming up for Week 10. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. If you have any comments, please drop them below and I will respond. Thank you.